Good afternoon. So today we are going to discuss about the control of vibriosis in shrimp aquaculture using bacteriophages. Vibriosis is a notorious pathogen of shrimp aquaculture. Although it's a common microflora of shrimp aquaculture, under stressful conditions it can cause mass mortalities. And we all know that 90% of the vibrios in salt water is resistant to one, at least one antibiotic and almost 20% of them are resistant to five antibiotics today. Although there are numerous problems caused by vibriosis, the major one being luminescent vibriosis. And of late, there's huge production loss because of white pickle syndrome. A recent uh, literature from University of Arizona postulate that white fecal disease is a combination of three factors. First one being EHP, an enteric pathogen. Second is presence of Vibrio. And third is the environmental stress. These three together results in white fecal disease. So Vibrio is one of the major positive agent for white fecal syndrome. This is the appearance of the pond in which we can see the floating white feces. Another problem caused by vibriosis is running mortality, mortality syndrome, which also causes production losses in shrimp aquaculture. Vibriosis also causes huge mortalities in hatcheries. The cumulative mortalities can go up to 30% under stressful conditions. And currently we are using antibiotics for the control of vibriosis. The major problem being the overuse and misuse of antibiotics, which has resulted in multiple drug resistant pathogens, not only in aquaculture, but also these enter into the human system. So by the year 2050, there is a literature which states that the death due to multiple drug resistant pathogens is going to be the major killer than cancer. It's also the second problem with the use of antibiotics is export rejection. So we do not have much choice and we cannot, we no longer can use antibiotics for the control of vibriosis or any other bacterial infection in shrimp aquaculture. And in aquaculture, it is impossible to vaccinate each and every animal. And also the immune system is very poorly developed in shrimp. So we need newer approaches to combat infection. Bacteriophages appear to be the natural, plausible, and appropriate candidate to overcome the above problems. And bacteriophages are already present in the unprocessed food and it's already present in the nature. So what is a bacteriophage? A bacteriophage is an obligate intracellular parasite that multiplied inside a bacteria by using the bacterial machinery. So it is a natural enemy to bacteria and we are using this to control the infections in the uh, shrimp aquaculture. Where do we find phages? Phages are found wherever there is bacteria. Phages are there in the intestine, they are there in the running water, effluent, soil and sewage. So it is naturally present everywhere, wherever there is bacteria. A phage typically attaches very specifically onto a bacterial cells using the tail fiber. This is like a lock and key. So a phage against Vibrio can attach only to Vibrio. And then it injects the DNA into the bacterial cell. And using the bacterial machinery, the phage multiplies, bacteria swells, and the phages are released outside. This in turn attaches to more and more bacteria. So this cycle continues till the bacteria is eliminated from the system. So this typically works like a bactericidal antibiotic where it, the bacteria is lysed using the phages. So this is the pictorial representation where we can see the attachment of bacteriophage using a tail fiber onto the bacterial surface. Many phages are attached onto the surface of the bacterial surface or surface of the bacteria and this the injection of the DNA and the synthesis of new bacteriophages inside the bacteria results in the swelling of the bacteria, which in turn bursts the bacteria cell and the phages spread to the neighboring bacteria. So now what is phage therapy? Use of bacteriophage for control of bacterial infection is called as phage therapy. The first evidence of phage therapy was uh, recorded in the year 1896, wherein they found that when there is a Vibrio cholera epidemic, people who are using water from Ganges were not affected by the epidemic. 
got Vibrio Pallari. So Hankin, the scientist who came up with this publication, has postulated that there is an entity in the water of uh, river water of Ganges, which passes through the porcelain filter and it could reduce the titers of bacteria Vibrio Pallari in the laboratory culture. Although he didn't say it is bacteriophage, this was the first cited literature regarding the bacteriophages. So here you can see on a lawn of bacteria, when you spot a bacteriophage, it clearly eats up the bacterium. So this is how we test in the lab to see the efficacy of the bacteriophages. What are the advantages of using bacteriophages? Bacteriophages can also kill a bacteria which is resistant to antibiotics. This produces a sidal action. That means it lyses the bacteria. This is the safest natural solution. There is no chemical added and there is no damage to the normal beneficial bacteria or any probiotic bacteria, unlike antibiotics. When we add antibiotics, you also kill beneficial bacteria, whereas bacteriophages specifically go and kill the vibrios or any other targeted bacteria. So these are the results of some of the Stalin studies. So this is the study done in six tanks under laboratory conditions in post larval tank, where this first tank is control tank where there is no Vibrio added and there is no phage added. In the second tank, we added Vibrios, only Vibrios. In all the other four tanks, Vibrio along with phages or antibiotic is added. So we could see that when only Vibrio is added, there is a mortality or the survival is only 45%. Whereas when Vibrio is added along with the phages or with the antibiotic, the survival is as good as the control. So in this case, fortunately, the antibiotic was able to control vibriosis. So the efficiency of the bacteriophage is as good as the best antibiotic. In the next field trial, which is done in the commercial hatchery, which was undergoing huge losses because of vibriosis, we can see, and this is the control tank where the survival is zero because of the vibriosis. And when we added the bacteriophages to the tank, the survival has gone up to 37%. Vibrioshir is one of the bacteriophage formulation used to the hatchery. So this is the appearance of Vibrio on an agar called TCBS agar. So when we added bacteriophages or Vibrioshi to hatchery tanks, we can see that the reduction of Vibrios day after day in the hatchery tank. So day zero, we had huge amount of Vibrio load and within 48 hours, it reduces by three to four logs. And we can see the disappearance of Vibrios in four to five days. This is also one of the graph which depicts the reduction in the Vibrio count in the hatchery tank. So the blue line indicates the tank in which probiotics was used where the CFU or quality forming unit per ml was 10 per 5 after 9 days. Whereas in the tank when we used Vibrio phages, the count was 3 logs lower than the control tank. So this is another field trial which compares antibiotics with probiotics and bacteriophages. So here we can see that in this study, the antibiotics has failed to control the Vibrios, hence the survival is only 40%. Using probiotics, the survival is 60% and using Vibrio shield, that is the bacteriophage, survival is around 72%. This is the small scale study done under time. So these are the two formulations which is available. Vibrio shield is available for hatcheries and elixir is available for the growouts. So this is another study which again proves that the phages are, bacteriophages are effectively able to control the vibriosis under hatchery environment. The blue one, the control where probiotics is used, the survival is around 45%, whereas when vibriosis, that is the bacteriophage was used, the survival is around 57%. So this, these are the results of a field study done using elixir, a grow out formulation containing bacteriophages. This was done in a farm in Andhra Pradesh. 14 points were selected out of which four were used 
for elixir application and 10 was for propiotic with irregular management. So these graphs depict that elixir, the bacteriophage formulation, is able to increase the survival by at least 11%. The FCR is decreased from 1.84 to 1.6 upon use of elixir. Production per hectare and production per lack of seed has improved using the bacteriophage. And also the average daily gain of the shrimp is higher using elixir when compared to the probiotics. And also the economic analysis of the production per acre using elixir versus probiotics says that the benefit to cost, benefit to cost ratio using elixir is 1.35 as against 1.06 using probiotics. So all these studies prove that the larval survival increased markedly with the bacteriophage therapy. There is a drastic reduction in video counts in LRTs. Bacteriophages are able to reduce mortality, increase production with lesser FCR in the grower ponds. This could be a standalone therapy or a valuable, valuable adjunct to probiotics. Thank you very much.